Number 8. Unusual Life in Antarctica Scientists have confessed that never in a million years would they have expected to find life nearly 3,000 feet below the ice in Antarctica, a place where they once thought no life form could exist. After all, between the extreme frigid temperatures and the pitch darkness at that depth, it seems impossible for any earthly being to survive for very long. However, researchers proved themselves wrong during a study in February of 2021 when they detected two unidentified types of organisms clinging to the bottom of a boulder beneath the Filchner Ronnie ice shelf. One of the strange creatures resembles a type of sponge, while the other has long stalks like a barnacle or a tube worm. British scientists made the discovery after drilling 2,860 feet into the ice at a location about 160 miles from the nearest open water. In a video posted to the British Antarctic Survey's Twitter account, scientist Hugh Griffiths explained that this is one of the least understood habitats on Earth. Experts have explored very little of what's beneath the Filchner Rani ice shelf, which extends outward from Antarctica and is the second largest in the continent. The team that recently discovered life beneath the ice shelf was attempting to drill to the sea floor to collect sediment samples. Their camera hit a boulder unexpectedly, and when they reviewed the footage, they noticed the unknown life forms. Their findings are now causing researchers to reconsider the limits of life on Earth. Number 7. A World War II Tank In 1944, there were rumors that a young boy from Estonia discovered a Soviet-built World War II-era tank. Snopes.com investigated these claims and found that a local resident, who lived in Metasjarv, recalled seeing tank tracks near Kurtna Lake. Decades later, he shared his memories with others, sparking a nationwide search for the vehicle. On September 14, 2000, a Soviet T-34-76 was pulled from the body of water in the country's Kurtna Lake district. The tank had been sitting at the bottom of the lake for 56 years prior to its discovery. Its presence was attributed to the intense battles that were fought in Estonia's northeastern region between February and September of 1944. During that period, more than 100,000 men were killed and some 300,000 were wounded. The tank that was discovered in the lake was captured by the German army during the conflict, which explains why there are German markings on the Soviet vehicle's exterior. The Germans began their retreat after it became clear that they were fighting a losing battle. It's likely that the tank was deliberately driven into the lake to prevent it from falling back into Soviet hands. The boy who later helped find the vehicle reportedly noticed that there were tank tracks entering but not coming out of the water anywhere. The child observed air bubbles emerging from the lake for over two months, leading him to believe that there was an armored vehicle at the bottom of the water. However, according to Snopes.com, the story's been covered by limited news sources, none of which have been deemed entirely credible. So at least for the time being, it's unclear whether the story is true. Number 6. Norway's First Dinosaur In 2006, local workers in Norway were drilling for oil in the North Sea when they accidentally stumbled upon the country's first ever dinosaur fossil. It was discovered at about 7,400 feet beneath the seabed, which also makes it the deepest dinosaur fossil ever recorded. According to researchers, the odds of oil workers discovering a dinosaur fossil are lower than the chances of winning the lottery. Unfortunately, the fossil was crushed by the drill they were using, which significantly delayed the process of identifying the creature and analyzing it for new information. Despite their difficulties, scientists eventually identified it as a Platyosaurus, a long-necked herbivorous dinosaur species which grew up to about 30 feet and weighed as much as 4 tons. This creature lived between 210 and 195 million years ago at the end of the Triassic period in the region now encompassed by Europe and Greenland. Back then, the area that now consists of the North Sea was instead occupied by a vast alluvial plain formed by sediment from ancient bodies of water. When dinosaurs like the Platyosaurus lived here, the area was mostly dry, with large rivers flowing through the land. Based on the fossil, the Platyosaurus is believed to be the first dinosaur that evolved to eat plants that grew high off the ground. Over many years, their species developed an unusually long neck in order to reach their food source. Even though this is the only dinosaur fossil ever found in Norway, scientists don't necessarily think that these creatures were rare in the region. In fact, they believe that the area was once teeming with dinosaur life, and that there's most likely more submerged fossils waiting to be discovered. At number 5, an ancient Roman bust. In 2018, art collector Laura Young was shopping at a Goodwill thrift store in Austin, Texas, 
when she spotted a Roman-looking bust sitting beneath a table with a $34.99 price tag attached to it. She was intrigued enough to buy it and soon noticed that it looked genuinely old, prompting her to wonder about its origins. Young spent the next few years trying to track down the sculpture's roots and consulting with experts at the University of Texas and at auction houses across the country. Thanks to Jörg Dieterling, a consultant from the fine arts brokerage called Sotheby's, the bust was eventually identified as an authentic Roman sculpture dating back to sometime between the 1st century BC and the early 1st century AD. Experts from the German museum where it was once housed believe it depicts one of the sons of Pompey the Great, a high-ranking Roman general and statesman who was ultimately defeated by Julius Caesar. Others have speculated that the bust represents Roman commander Drusus Germanicus, but either way, everyone seems to agree that it's a genuine Roman artifact. It's been identified as part of a sculpture that sustained significant damage during an Allied bombing campaign against Nazi Germany during World War II. But how the bust ended up at a thrift store in Austin is anyone's guess. However, it's possible, or perhaps even likely, that an American soldier from Texas brought it home after being stationed in the region where it was once kept. The bust is now on display at the San Antonio Museum of Art until May of 2023, which is when it will be returned to Germany. Young received an unspecified finder's fee for her discovery, but she told USA Today that the experience was bittersweet since she wasn't able to keep it or sell the bust. What's the most interesting thing you've ever found at a thrift store? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Number 4. Ancient Lice Comb In 2016, archaeologists unearthed a 3,700-year-old ivory comb at an ancient Israeli site called Lachich. During the 2nd millennium BC, the settlement was a bustling Canaanite city. It wasn't until 2021 that researcher Madeleine Mumkuoglu noticed something intriguing about the engravings on the comb. She held it under a bright light and took a photo with her phone, and when she zoomed in, she was surprised to notice shallow etchings of letters. A team of experts took a closer look at the artifact and identified 17 letters forming seven words. While they were unable to definitively date the comb, they believe it originates from sometime around 1700 BC based on Canaanite arrowheads and pottery with similar lettering. The inscription translates to, May this tusk root out the lice of the hair and the beard. This discovery was shocking because it's the first time researchers have found a complete sentence written in the first ever alphabet-based language invented by the Canaanites. According to Josef Garfinkel, a professor of archaeology, the Canaanites were the first people to use letters that represented sounds in their writing system. Their version of the alphabet eventually evolved into a system known as Phoenician. Then, over the years, Phoenician became Greek, and then it gradually turned into the Latin alphabet that's widely used in the modern world today. Madeleine Mumkuoglu, who first noticed the unique inscriptions on the ivory comb, believes that based on the material it's made out of, it may have been a gift for someone important. While speaking with CNN, she offered one possibility. Back then, much like today, people were ashamed of having lice and kept the comb hidden in a pocket for discreet use. Number 3. Purple Crowberry The alpine plant known as the purple crowberry is a small shrub that was declared extinct in Vermont in 1908. However, in what botanist Bob Pop has described as an extraordinary find, at least one specimen was discovered alive and well on Mount Mansfield in late 2022. Pop, who works for Vermont's Fish and Wildlife Department, explained that the purple crowberry is easily overlooked. Apparently, the shrub closely resembles a similar plant called the black crowberry, which grows abundantly throughout the region. He said that the discovery of a living purple crowberry plant exemplifies the importance of having keen botanical observers on the ground. In recent decades, botanists searched for the plant in Vermont but failed to find it, leading them to classify it as extinct. Until now, that is. The recently identified plant was found by Liam Ebner, a member of the Adirondack Mountain Club and a trained summit steward who reported his discovery to the Fish and Wildlife Department. Since Ebner is a professional, he was able to get close enough to the plant to identify it without harming it, which is something experts caution amateurs against doing. Pop confirmed Ebner's find, and in October of 2022, he found three more clumps of purple crowberry at the site. Earlier that year, he also helped to identify a federally threatened orchid called the Small World Pogonia, marking the second discovery of two previously thought to be extinct plants in the area. 
The purple crowberry is identified by its needle-like leaves and its distinct purple berries typically found on rocky ground above the tree line. The species' known range spans parts of the northeastern U.S., including Maine, New Hampshire, and New York. But at the moment, it's listed as uncommon in New Hampshire and endangered in New York. To prevent any accidental damage to the newly discovered specimen in Vermont, officials are keeping the plant's exact location a secret. Number 2. An Ancient Coin in 2022, Edward Hines, an amateur historian, unearthed a rare gold coin predating the earliest known European arrival to Newfoundland, Canada since the Viking era. The 600-year-old coin suggests that someone else made it to the island at least 70 years before John Cabot ever set foot on its shoreline in 1497. According to currency expert Paul Barry, Hines found a Henry VI quarter noble and it was minted in London sometime between 1422 and 1427. Back in the 1400s, this coin would have represented a significant amount of money, the equivalent of roughly 81 Canadian dollars today. Barry told MSN.com that the coin had most likely fallen out of circulation by the time it was lost. However, it's not entirely known how it ended up where it was, and it's up for speculation and debates as experts continue to research its possible origins in order to discourage treasure hunters from flocking to the site. The exact location that the coin was found is being kept under wraps for the time being. Prior to its discovery, the oldest minted coin ever found in Canada was also unearthed in Newfoundland. Discovered in 2021, the piece was minted sometime in the mid-1490s. And at number one, denim. Denim is one of the world's most popular fabrics. After all, jeans go with almost everything and they're worn by people around the globe from all social classes. The name denim is derived from the name Serge de Nîmes, which reflects its origins in Nîmes, France. During the 18th century, villagers in Nîmes tried to make a copycat version of a fabric called Serge, which was made in Genoa, Italy. Instead, they came up with an entirely new kind of fabric called Serge de Nîmes, which was later shortened to denim. The modern version of denim was invented in 1873 by Jacob Davis and Levi Strauss, the latter of whom might sound familiar. They created their version of denim specifically for certain lines of work. In other words, it was a laborer's cloth. Today, as you know, it's worn by everyone. Strauss began selling jeans in San Francisco in the decades following the 19th century gold rush after teaming up with a tailor named Jacob Davis. They came up with the idea when a gold prospector asked David to create a pair of durable pants which could withstand a day's worth of hard work. The thought of durability is what inspired Davis to make the pants out of denim, a classically tough fabric that was made even tougher with the implementation of copper nails. He placed the nails in places where the pants are most likely to rip, like the pockets. Needless to say, Levi Strauss jeans were a huge success. They remain incredibly popular to this day, both for fashion and work purposes. According to the India Times, around 39% of modern jeans are sold in North America, and 10% are sold in Japan and Korea. And while the credit for inventing them goes to Davis and Strauss, it was pop culture figures like James Dean as well as sports like polo that turned them into a commonly worn item. Would you rather discover a new type of organism living in Antarctica or stumble across an artifact from ancient Rome at a thrift store? Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe! Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.